welcome back to Winterberg in Germany this Friday evening, or late afternoon, let's be honest, as we get ready for the second and deciding heat of the fourth race in the BMW IBSF Women's Skeleton World Cup. And the camera pictures tell you everything you need to know about today. As everywhere else in Northern Europe, it's a bit damp, a bit miserable, and a bit drizzly. But we have got the lights on on the track, and it should be a sparkling second heat. Martin Haven and alongside me, Austin Florian, and a nicely bunched top three with some real potential winners in here. Yeah, absolutely. There's um, a lot of uh, a lot of tight groups uh, in this top 20, and top three are a tenth apart and a huge chunk of about eight sliders in the middle that have real potential to move around a lot. Well, no woman has won more than two races on this track. Tina Herman's won twice. Kimberly Boss won twice last season, January and December, and she is in second place here, so she could make this a hat trick of wins. Yeah, Kim knows how to slide this track pretty well. It's uh, somewhat her home track and pretty close to home, so she knows what she's doing here. But Mimi Reneva of Canada is our current leader. Last woman from Canada to win on this track was Elizabeth Arce back in 2014. So it's been a while, uh, 2017 rather, it's been a while since then. But Mimi with a slender lead, and that's the nature of this track. You never really escape here, do you? No, you don't really. Most people don't, and Martin's Dukers does. Um, <laughs> but okay. most people generally don't, and you're going to see tight racing for, for the most part uh, every race you get here. Yeah, some very close margins up and down the field. Kimberly Boss, 800s behind. Tina Herman, 1100s behind. Could the Olympic champion Hannah Nice sneak a medal? Yes, she could, because as we saw in the men's race, it's so damn easy to give away time here. From fifth place down to 11th place, just two tenths of a second cover those athletes and another couple of hundreds down to 12th place there are some very very tight groups look at that chow down and kendall wessenberg 100 of a second apart jacqueline LeBurge does not get a second heat only the fastest 20 go through so for the first time this season we have cut somebody from the field but our two rookies for team gb both go through so uh Good news for them. They, like a number of others, will remain here for a week. Hallie Clark there, for instance, uh, because next week here is the Junior World Championship. So they will be staying on for that as the rest of the field heads to two weeks in Altenburg in Saxony. So there's a, a gear shift for you guys. Here, again, it's like going from Park City perhaps to Lake Placid, you know, relatively long, gradual corners here, and then it just Altenburg comes at you like a rush. Yes, yeah, somewhat. I mean, it's a, for me, it's a very well-welcomed uh, transition. <laughs> I love Altenburg a little bit more than this track, but it's a certainly going to be a big shift uh, in just the intensity. And for the third year in a row, two weeks in Altenburg. Okay, there we go. Two world championships and now a, a double race weekend, or two race weekends. Getting our second heat underway is Italy's Alessia Crippa. So the Italians returning to the World Cup fold after not heading to North America. She had a disappointing first heat. She was still hanging around here down at the bottom, actually talking to everybody that would chat when we came out of the booth at the end of the first run. 5.42, good second getaway. A little bit slower than the first run. We may see the groove slow down a bit. Um, you never know, though. It's getting dark. It's getting cold again. Uh, we may see more frost. We may see less. Less. It is still above freezing, and we just don't know what we're going to see. We just want to see what uh, unfolds. And see, for us, it doesn't matter because we're only watching. But when you're trying to compete, you have to try and guess what the track is going to do when you get to it, which could be an hour, hour and a half, maybe even almost two hours after you were last on it, and two days after you trained on it. So there's a lot of guesswork. There's a lot of guesswork, but there's a lot of uh, just experience and knowledge that comes with what has happened in the past. Uh, kind of seeing what sleds do, seeing what forerunners do, seeing what the sleds lead off do, and uh, she is kind of a guinea pig at the moment, but she's handling it pretty well. She's having all right around a couple little mistakes, but nothing really that bad, and she goes three quarters of a second slower in her second run. <laughs> I want to translate Willy Schneider's uh, under his breath. Uh, it's yeah, it's Willie. Yeah. It's hard to. It's, he's just his own. He's his own man. He's. It's hard to translate him. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, he's coaching the Italians. Fifty nine seven two for Lesia Cripper. That's faster than her sixty point zero one by a quarter of a second. So there you go. 
three tenths faster, in fact. Yeah, either she sped up or the track sped up, and we'll find out in a few sleds. Well, she was 18th off, and she's first off on a fresh spritz, so Big there difference. will be no frost. Yeah. So that doesn't hurt. Yeah. The, uh, it makes a big difference in training. Uh, not as much of a difference in the race. They seem to be able to handle it a little bit better in the race when the Germans are running later in the order. But yeah. She looks a lot happier with the run. Next up for France, Agathe Bessard. And again, we talked about tiny margins all the way through the field. Her advantage over Alessia Kripper, just 300 to a second. If you're wondering what the artwork on the helmet is, it's the marmot, which is the kind of beaver-like rodent that inhabits the French Alps. Uh, a very familiar sight around La Plaine, where she comes from. A little bit slower, so at this rate, I'm kind of starting to think that the groove has gotten a bit stickier. Yeah. Uh, the sleds that go, through the, that go through each run may free it up, though. Uh, well, we'll see. We, we saw in the men's competition almost nobody pushed faster in the second heat, apart from Christopher Grote here, but he said the first start was rubbish. So, uh, yeah, it, it didn't seem to be getting any quicker. Yeah, and sometimes it just, it just is what it is. You never know. Uh, she looks like she's having a pretty decent run, so a little, little bit better speed than Alicia. She was down on her push, so yeah. she should start to see her come back. Right uh, now. Right there. there. Go. Good predictive uh, viewing. Nice, clean run. Looks like she's having a bit tidier of a run than she did first run. A little more relaxed and calm as well. She was had a, has quite a heads-up style, doesn't she? She's always quite upright on the sled compared yeah, you know, to quite a lot of the sliders. Some people have their uh, have their heads up high. You can't really, they just, uh, the way they're built, uh, I'm the same way, I have a very high head. And yeah. Some people can put it very low. Well, the other thing she does is she rolls her shoulders down a lot. So she's, at, although her head is up a little bit, she's actually reducing the frontal area, which aerodynamicists tell us is uh, the more important part of it, so. Absolutely. <laughs> Born to slide, I get Bessar. Her father works at the track in La Plan, and she never wanted to be a bobsledder. She always wanted to do skeleton. I mean, it is the better sport. Yeah. Well, she had to start in luge because you're not allowed to do skeleton until you're 16. So uh, kids often start, as, as we'll see when we're in Innsbruck, we're like three or four years of age. They're going down the track, not from the top, but learning with their feet in the wrong direction. That's you're five. Yeah. There we go. Next up, Kim Marmons of Belgium. Again, very close to the Low Countries. So lots of friends and family always come out to support the Belgian athletes here as well. And Kim. We talked about this, this in the first heat. Pre-season training in Whistler, the fastest track on the planet, had a big crash, uh, injured both her legs, and she's still really struggling to walk, and particularly the left leg is giving her a lot of tip. Solid push, though, for being injured. Uh, yeah. Looks pretty good, and she handles zero well. Again, one of those, uh, an ex-German slider, has hundreds of runs on this track and knows what she's doing on the way down. Yeah. A lot of height in the front of two. Doesn't look like a lot, but it, uh, can manifest it, but she handled it very well, handled it like she knows what she's doing here. Yeah. Six tenths ahead of Agat Bessar. And right now, this is a little bit like Kim Boss two or three seasons ago when she was badly injured and she was basically walking off the start just to keep herself and keep that World Cup spot. And, and that's where Kim is right now. Not quite walking, but... Yeah, I mean, she's definitely going slower, but her form looks all right. And yeah. her driving is on point right now. She is driving great. This is a very good looking run from her. It's a really nice looking run. Building a lot of time. Ooh, there you go. Just as we're saying how good it is, one little mistake at the bottom, but. Ah, that's fine. Best speed, 78.4 miles an hour. She goes over a second quicker than her first run. 1.1 seconds. She... Okay, 58.51 would have left her. Um, in. Uh, in First. Old. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, now, one of the athletes that we talked about who isn't here, as Alfie Williamson helps with the sled, is uh, Jacqueline Lurling, the, the local girl here in Winterburg. Yep. But actually, she's not racing, but she is here. She's forerunning. She's one of the, the sleds that goes down to make sure all the timing and everything works. And her forerunning run was faster than any of the race runs. Yeah, I mean, if there's anyone that knows what she's doing, it's Jacka here. And uh, Kim knows what she's doing here. And it, she just showed everybody what to do down this track. Um, if she had that first run, she would have been right in the mix. I do think the track uh, may have sped up. It looks pretty shiny and a good spritz, but she should be very happy with that run. Good to be back. Uh, she's back with a bullet in that second heat. She was one second and two hundredths off the lead in the first heat. She's just gone a second quicker than her first run. 
And that means everybody else has to go a second quicker just to stay level with where they were ahead of her. So that's the challenge now for the USA's Kendall Wessenberg. 500s in the bank, but knowing she's got to find a second. Is the track a second quicker? Can Kendall be a second quicker? I mean, Kendall does know how to drive, and she, she can put it down the track. She's going to have a tough time catching Kim, but... Uh, Kendall, Kendall's got a motto, mess around and build speed, and she's just going to do quite that this second run. And yeah. I'm excited to see what she can do, try to catch Kim down the track. All right, gaps out to 1900s. I think Kim Marman's maybe in the leader's box some while, so hopefully somebody will get her a coat and possibly a glue vine as well. But let's... as Kendall's teammate, I'd like to see, yeah, I'd like to see her knock her off, but we'll see. A little left going into the Chrysler, second best speed. And it may be that Marmons has just like, lit, lit the afterburners and will fly up into the top four or five, but Kendall wants yeah. to pick up spots as well. I mean, there is absolutely nothing wrong with Kendall's run. Kendall has a very good looking run here. Kim just went that fast. Yeah. A little late flop, just where everybody is down into the final corner and uphill all the way through the seal curve. 59 at 1 3. Well, again, that would have been good enough for seven. Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to see some faster times. The ice is holding up a bit better, a little lower temps. Um, yeah. We're going to see some good times this, this heat. Kendall definitely had a good run, and she should be happy about that. Um, but then that's, you know, that, that's changed. The, the track has changed completely from what you just did an hour and a half ago, never mind what you did two days ago. Yeah, and the speed is going to come. The intensities are going to be different. Um, and a lot of the more experienced sliders are going to know what to do with that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the more the more different times and different weather conditions you've raced this track, the the more you've got a chance of adapting. Which and is different every time you do it. <laughs> and you have to learn really fast. You know, by turn two or three, you've got to be dialed in or you're just giving it all away. Oh, if you don't have to sort it out of, into corner two, you, your race is over. All right, Chow Dan of China, another one of our young athletes, just 20 years of age, turned 20 in North America. So seems almost certain that she will stay here for the Junior Worlds. And uh, you saw her coach, Dirk Matchens. He's got all the Chinese athletes under his remit, but also another dog in this fight. He's the personal coach for Tina Herman. So see how she does late in the run. Quick push from, uh, from Dan there. A uh, little bit slower than her first run, so not too bad. Handles the top of the track pretty solid. All right, she's in the green over Kim Marmons again. Every athlete that comes will have a growing advantage over Marmons for the first heat. Yep. And she's opened that up as, as well. I see that coming back, though, right? Yep. Maybe in the exit of Kreisel. A little bit at rough into corner six, down about a K on Kim. And she'll probably drop back going into corner nine right here or be close. So their speed tied, so you were right on the money. And she's falling back right now. Uh, she made a little bit of a mistake in Kreisel, and that's really manifesting down here. And she's kind of uh, just losing some speed, but she shouldn't drop too much. Right, she was 100 the head of Kendall Westenberg at the line. She comes in three tenths, 2900s ahead of Kendall. So an improvement for Xiaodan of China. And again, Kim Marmons has literally hit it out of the park. An absolutely astonishing second heat. So Xiaodan of China is in second place. And she also went about three quarters of a second faster than her first run. So we are going to see some fast times here. Yeah. Not going to be anywhere near the track record of 56.7, but we will be a fair bit close, uh, faster than the first run. Yeah, we need a much longer, colder winter than, than we're having at the moment for track record speeds, I think. Yeah, it's a bit mild right now. Yeah. It's kind of like coming here in September right now. Yeah, all the Alps are feeling it right now. Yeah. And they've even had to stop sliding in San Moritz this week because uh, you can push a broom into the ice, which is not great news. Yeah, we were there last week and it was pretty soft. Yeah. Away very quickly goes Anna Fernstedt of the Czech Republic. 15th place after the first heat, Anna, and her slender advantage over Kim Marmons is 29 hundredths of a second. That may not help her much. Yeah, one thing we're going to have to keep an eye out for this second run is the rain. The rain did start, and you can see the river running down the start grooves into corner zero. It does look shiny here, but everywhere else, it may be deteriorating due to the rain. So 
the later sliders may uh, be at a disadvantage. So we'll have to wait and see for that. Well, Kim Marmons, 21st, last out of the start shed in the first heat, and then third out of the start shed in the second heat. So very different lines for her, and she really made use of that. Absolutely. Uh, and at this rate, it looks like she's about to pick off another um, that she put a very good run down. Nothing, nothing wrong with Anna's run. A few tiny mistakes, but just got outdriven yeah. by Kim. 59, 1, 9. Yeah, there's, Kim's going to have to come up with a lot of leader box celebrations because she is going to be there a long while. Like we said, Kim Marmon's second hit was quicker than anything anybody produced in the first heat. And our next six sliders only are over a 15 hundredths of a second. So not too much more of an advantage over Kim from the first run, about a half second. But they're really going to have to put on a good run to knock Kim down. Anna Fanstedt, another project, a pro project of the German system. That, that little skid there down, lower down in the track, taking speed away just when you need it most. That's five to six, and then into the Kreisel, holding her line. I mean, she knows where to go and what to do. Doesn't always work. So Anna Fanstedt slips to third place after our first six sleds. Next up, Tabby Stocker from Islington in London. We said in the first heat, the first athlete to come into the sport from trapeze flying. She has not raced on this track before. She was due to come in the Europa Cup last year, but illness prevented her from racing. So six training runs and her first in practice in the, the race itself. And a rough exit of uh, corner zero right there. Got her into 14th place though on her World Cup debut. She will be staying for Junior Worlds next week. Yeah, getting some good experience in a World Cup field is going to be really nice to bring that into Junior World Championships. Now, hopefully the family are watching back home in the UK. That's a really important day for her, not just in terms of the World Cup. Down on speed to Kim. Yeah. She's still got quite a lead. And we'll this see. is going to be the case, isn't it? Yeah, the we're going to see a large chunk taken out. Further and further and further down the track. 2200. As we get She'll be in. close, but that tap to 4.9 is not going to help her cause hold up, holding off Kim. But again, and this she's is, even and in the red. This is her eighth run in her life down this track. And this is going to be a top 15 run for Tabby Stocker. She drops into second place by only 1900s. There's the big smile from Matthias Guggenberger. I don't know how well he knows Tabby and Freya, who have basically come up from the development program, but that's a, a great mature debut. To be beaten by Kim Marmons, no disrespect there at all. She should be very happy with that run. Uh, third fastest for the second run, but uh, obviously, very happy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. They were just so excited to be in the big show, but yeah, corner zero catches everybody. Yeah, a couple little mistakes, but it looks like she's got a superpower of being very chill, and that is going to benefit her. She had a couple decent mistakes, but still held some good speed. So as long as she keeps that going and still remains to chill out and just have fun, she's going to go fast. Listen, if you can fly trapeze, I don't think being an inch off the ground is going to be that much of a drama. Yeah, I've never heard that before. That's a yeah. first for me. Yeah, it is. Well, we've had a ballet dancer. Now we have a trapeze artist. Next up, Suzanne Kreyer for Germany. Another potential junior world championship contender. She's, 20, oh, she's 23 years old, so she won't be. Silver medalist in Lake Placid almost over rotates in the load there. Super wet. It's raining a lot up there. That is really going to affect some later sliders. You're going to get your some wet feet in there, and it really affects your grip level as well. Yeah. Well, the, the first element of it is still covered, but beyond that, you, you run into the, yeah, into the drizzle. So it remains in the lead and just creeping away a little from Kim Malman's. Yeah, a little bit same push as she had first run. Down on speed, not as much. The closest speed we've seen to Kim Myleman. So she has a chance as long as she stays close to Kim in this next split. And she made mistakes in the first run in the lower part of the track. If she can tidy them up, she might just hang on. Yeah, she should hang on and, and keep Kim Myleman's away. But Kim Myleman's will still be the leader of this second run. Yeah. 
But into the lead overall goes Suzanne Crea by 4100, so 5847 compared to 5925. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a very different track from the first heat, isn't it? Absolutely, it's a lot faster and it's wet up top, and that those grooves are going to deteriorate. Those girls are going to have to be careful about popping the groove. And you didn't train that late either this late, did you, during the week? So this is unfamiliar territory. Yeah, somewhat, but it's not too different. Uh, I enjoy a night race, to be honest. I but, love a night uh, race. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun event. I just I think it's just a fun time to be there, but you can see how much <laughs> rain there is on that <laughs> ramp. That is wet. Yeah, that's, that's not fun. So there is your new leader, Suzanne Crea. Already handed off her bib to a kid. Yeah. There you go. There's, uh, there's going to be a few of these on eBay after the day. <laughs> so next up is our second rookie in the field. This is Freya Tarbit from Derby. And again, of the two new British girls, she had the better run into 12th place. 300s ahead of Suzanne Crea. She has raced here once in her life. So she's probably got about 10 runs more than teammate Tabby. But again, look at this. It is white water it's, rafting, isn't it? Out of we're zero. getting more and more rain coming down. I can't tell how much it's raining outside, but from that shot, uh, looking down the grooves, it looks like it's coming down harder. Yeah, it certainly does. 900s back. And again, she will contest the Junior World Championships here next year, uh, next week. A little early into six. Handles it well, goes hair early in appraisal, but keeping the sled moving forwards and relaxing. Already claimed four medals this season in Europe Cup races, the junior tier of sliding. 2200s back, third best speed. This is currently second place ahead of Kim Milemans. She's pretty close though. She's looks like she she might hold off Kim. Yeah. Never know though. Fourth best speed. It's going to be close at the line. She won't lead. She is second place. 58-83. Suzanne Crea picks up a spot. So third best start. 5:42 for Freya Tarbit. And she will be no worse than a 13th position in her World Cup debut. Which is pretty good. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I don't know when we'll get to see these two British sliders again in World Cup. It may be a while, but they have certainly shown that they've got lots of potential for the future in the British program. Yeah, this British program is doing very well right now with the recent pickup of Matthias Guggenberger and Martin Stukers. You have a power team with a great technology and a great leadership and great coaching. Yeah. yeah. To keep that dream alive, you can see how heavy it's raining down outside our commentary box window. Next up, for Brazil, Nicole Silveira with the familiar helmet livery of the late great Ayrton Senna. So what can Nicole produce? Now, where will she be up against quote teammate because the Brazilians and the Belgians are working together, Kim Milmans. That will be an interesting little battle between the two. Again, the you can yeah, always see the bow wave coming off the sled as yeah, you go through the water. It's a bit wet in there. Uh, she got a 5.53, 200 slower than her first run. Um, she's going to have quite her work cut out for her uh, holding off Suzanne, who very well could uh, knock off a few, a few spots. Yeah. Again, it's so easy to give away speed here. If you don't, then you get to look like a real hero. Exactly. Middle to the left, maybe coming into the Chrysler. Down on speed a bit. Yeah, going a little bit, a little bit too much the wrong direction to really come back and, yeah. and get Suzanne. She may drop a couple spots here. She's going to be behind Kim Marmans, maybe behind Tabby Stoker as well. Right now, this is only the sixth best run of the second heat, or in uh, overall terms, yeah, eighth best run of the heat, sixth position overall. So she drops a half dozen places. Suzanne Crea stays in the leader's box. That's not the run that Nicole Silvera was hoping for. Yeah, she's going to want that run back. There was a couple little things that were bad, but overall, I think uh, Suzanne just had that good of a run. It wasn't too bad. A um, couple things that really uh, just took a lot of time out. This was certainly a big mistake after a uh, not ideal Kreisel, but uh, some pretty good first run. So she should take that home and be happy about that. Yeah. 
Always frustrating when your second run is not as good as your first. Always much better to leave on a high. Suzanne Kreyer leads from Freya Tarbit. Kim Milemans, 10 down, 10 to go here in Winterberg. Yeah, Kim saying, uh, Nicole saying goodbye to the late great Pele there. Yeah, Nicole Silvera saying goodbye to Pele. Oh, to Pele. Yeah. yeah. Yes, indeed, yeah. So there's our leader, Suzanne Crea. Uh, Two-minute hold. It's the first two-minute commercial break we've had in the entire season so far. So uh, we have our leaders at the bottom. And look at look, look, oh, the right-hand side, the luge ramp. Look, goodness. that's where half the water's coming from. So that's coming in as well. Keep an eye on the grooves. Yeah. They could get pretty melty. Uh, they're going to get pretty... Well, the other thing is, with that water running down it, the groove's, what, like maybe an inch deep? Roughly. Yeah, uh, here, a little shallower, yeah. And so you put a centimetre of water in there, and suddenly, you know, if the runner starts to aquaplane on top of that as it's pushing a bow wave in front of it, then suddenly you can end up with a, the sled just skating straight out without you doing anything wrong. Yeah, that not even as much that as much as the it, the warm rain yeah. eating the ice away. Yeah. It uh, This is not weather conducive to keeping ice. Yeah, and the, uh, the friction coefficient as well of trying to push through water. As you'll know from driving your own cars on the highway, as soon as you hit standing water, it's like the, the wheel just stops moving forward. So 10 down, 10 to go. Hallie Clark next up. You can see her there waiting with Matt Antoine. Great to see Matt back in the US program as well. Great always, to have him back. Always good to have that knowledge, that experience, and, and that athlete relatable knowledge and experience as well. You know, he knows what you guys go through. Absolutely. It's been an absolute pleasure working with Matt, and I'm very happy that we have him. Um, I never got to race on World Cup with it, him, uh, but I'm very happy getting to race with him now and pick his brain. Yeah, yeah really good. And, and bringing experience in is, is what keeps these programs alive. Suzanne Crea doing a lot of hanging out in the leader's box at the moment. 10 down, 10 to go. Let's see how far up the order the German can rise. I think she hey, could pick off a couple spots here. We'll see if Hallie can really hold her off. So Hallie Clark for America. The U.S. athlete in 10th place after the first of our two heats here. Suzanne Kreyer of Germany, the local girl in the lead. And the flood of water. I can't look at the spray coming off the runners. You can see the runners when they go sideways are really spraying up a bunch of water. Hallie only has six hundreds to work with from the first run. And she's already back a bit. We'll see if she can pull anything back in the bottom of the track. But that is pretty hard with a mistake up top. Well, she's never raced on this track before. So six runs in training is all her knowledge. A rough tap before five and a tap before six. That is going to be very hard to come back from. Yeah. And she has the slowest speed in the prize. Yeah, speed has vanished, and, and you feel that, don't you? You oh, feel you that do. the sled is now sluggish compared to where it was in the first heat. You feel it, and it always feels like more when, you've made, when you know you've made mistakes, even if it isn't. Bottom of the track is fine, but the damage is done. She will be dropping a few spots. Hopefully she can mitigate some of the damage right here. Well, if she can leave this behind her this weekend and then take it, all the knowledge of the good stuff into next week for the Junior Worlds, she'll be an awful lot happier. Again, you can see the water running downhill there from the finish area. Yeah, rough, yeah. rough race, rough second run for Hallie there. Uh, 43 start. So 43 start, a tenth slower than her first start, and with that much water to push through, hardly surprising. And uh, yeah, we talked about how easy it is to give away speed here, and Hallie demonstrates exactly that. Yeah, with the with the track going away like it is, you are gonna need to be perfect to not drop spots because everyone ahead of you has had at least two minutes better ice than you yeah and everybody following has probably got a lot more experience as well she's now totaled eight trips down the track that's assuming she did three on both days in training and i don't know that she did so she did she did got everything okay. she could li yu chi of china is next up in ninth place after the first heat and her advantage over suzanne Kreyer again is a tenth of a second, that is all, and it is very easy to give that away. She's going to have to put down a very good run, and she pushes a tenth slower than she did in the first run. That is not going to help her cause, and oh. that's pretty much it right there. She yeah. will not be picking off Suzanne, and she's going to be fighting for every tenth she can right now. 
that skid sideways into the uphill section of the track is not what you want to do. Yeah, it pretty much goes without saying that you don't want to sl slide uphill. And s when you've got so little speed, it rubs off such a large percentage of it as well. Yeah, the name of the game is just holding speed and saving as much as you possibly can. Because the uh, last input you can put in is when you jump on that sled. And then when you've made that mistake, you've got to somehow stop going all the way down in a blind rage with yourself, just cursing yourself. You've still got to keep your focus because you're still doing 75 miles an hour at the bottom of the track. Yeah, and that's part one of the hardest parts of the sport is maintaining composure when you've made a mistake. Yeah. Pulling a little bit back on speed up, uh, not the slowest at the bottom of the track. That mistake drops her back yeah. a lot. Tenth place out of 12 sleds with eight still to go. What could have been a nice top 10 finish for Li Yuxi is going to end up as possibly no better than 18th spot. And you are starting to see what Winterberg is known for. Yeah. The jumping around and so much movement in these second run, especially with this weather. And early in the run, corner zero. Look at that. Yeah, not what you want. That is a that is run ender, and she did not do enough to correct that there. They say do nothing, but there's a point where you got to do a little bit of something. Well, sideways style that the late Ken Block would have been proud of, but here not really gaining her anything. So Liu Qi plunges down the order, was on for a personal best, but that has all evaporated. Next up, Jane Channel. And we've seen the dangers, haven't we? You know, she's got 1700s over Suzanne Crayer. That's nothing in this tight sort of fifth, five to 15 midfield pack. There's, there's no room for error at all. Yeah, Suzanne went six sleds ago and Jane only has about 16, 17 hundreds on Suzanne. Yeah, that shows you how tight this field is. Jane's gonna have a good, solid push here. She's a 5.30 first run. Yeah, 5.35. Okay, so how, holding up pretty well, given exactly yeah. how wet it and is. a big skid down into corner one, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Well, third best speed at this stage. Hopefully she can hold it, she can have a good run up here. She's holding to uh, Suzanne, but she, she outpushed her by a decent bit, so. Uphill and then dropping down into corner five. Still in the lead over Suzanne Crayer, but not yeah, now. Yeah, 200's back now, and it's only going to get worse from here. Yeah. Speed's gone away. Nice line in the Kreisel. Not feeling super comfortable. You can see her feet are kind of going around everywhere. Uh, losing a decent bit of speed, but the track is going away. And that yeah. one mistake she made up top really followed her all the way down the track. Low down here, the track is looking quite mat, quite fast. Watch out for a victory Whoa. roll right here. Big hit on the wall. Not so enough speed. Injury added to insult. Only the sixth best run. She drops three spots. Suzanne Crayer leads. Freya Tarbit and Kim Milmans moving up in her wake. Still second and third with how many left to go? Seven. So Freya Tarbit on her debut will get at least a top ten finish. Nice. And Kim Milmans will be at least tenth. Wow. Off 18th in the first heat. Well, for Jane again, as so often, the damage was done before turn four. Yeah, the damage was done right up top and yeah. uh, coming coming into corner one, which we're seeing a lot of. And there might be with the roof kind of hanging over and they're getting rain on half of it. Half of the straightaway has grip and half is slippery. So you can get pulled one way and we may see that in the next couple of sleds happen again. Uh, Suzanne Crayer feeling sort of a little uh, awkward now with everybody making so many mistakes. Next up, Kelly Curtis, bronze medalist in the last race of 2022. I had to try and remember what year it was this year in Lake Placid. A big day for her. Let's see if she can add to that with maybe a top six or seven finish here. And Kelly a little sideways out of corner zero, but handles it all right given. Uh, it seems that there to be something weird there because the last few sleds have had issues coming out of zero. Well, there's a lot of water and maybe frost on the other runner as well, and yeah. that's going to screw with the sled's balance. And she's back and down on speed yeah. quite a bit. I can hear a Skin fair bit of toe dragging. Yeah. Now that's the helmet on the ice. Speed's coming back a little. Ninth best speed rather than 11th in the Chrysler. Trying to mitigate any anything she can right in here in the bottom of the track. Gonna drop a couple spots though. Yeah. 
down to fifth place on the splits and rolls over the line. Damp victory roll there yeah. with that rain. 100 ahead of Tabby Stocker of Great Britain. So fifth and sixth separated by 100. And still a third of a second between leader Suzanne Crayer and Freya Tarbit of Great Britain in second. Yeah, she'll be no worse than 11th. Hopefully she can maybe pick off one more and get a top 10, but that's a... Hey, well, listen, it's in the lap of the gods now, isn't it? You know, yeah. this, is, this is one of the more random races you'll see here in Winterberg. Yeah. But sadly, this is just Winterberg. Yeah, she had a couple <laughs> little mistakes here. She drove five a little too hard and uh, kind of cost her going into that flat section of Kreisel. But a couple little mistakes that, again, really compounded in this warm weather and a nice victory roll there. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. It's fine. Just a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> little wet, little cold. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff, her main cheerleader and coach and husband back mm -hmm. in Boulder. Hi, Jeff. Yeah. Well, next up, the uh, woman who started in 20th on our start draw in her 98th World Cup race, Janine Flock, missed the first pass of the season, rehabbing from back surgery again during this summer. And her partner, Matthias Guggenberger, knows all about that during his athletic career. Now, she makes a good stab at the zero curve and a good run down to turn one. And the highest velocity so far. Very right. interesting. So this is where it now gets interesting. Somebody with huge experience. She's had 14 previous, 14 previous World Cup races, never mind anything else on this track. Yeah, Janine, uh, Janine, even with the uh, ninth fastest push, had the best velocity. Down on speed into Kreislo, yeah. and losing to Suzanne right now. Well, she Kim will Malman's, be back on this next split. Kim Malman's has the fastest sled down the track, but she's just clinging in there. Second best speed. This will be tight. This is where all her knowledge, all her experience has got to come to play. She should hold as long as nothing happens. She's Keep everything moving forward. Building the lead. It's not going to be much, but it should be the lead. It is the lead. The team flock by 400. Yes, says Jeff Payne. So 58-66 for Janine Flock. She will be no worse than sixth place her first World Cup race here. Third. Three third place finishes she's had on this track. She's never had a silver or a gold. Yeah, third fastest run of the uh, second heat for her right there. Um, <laughs> Suzanne was two tenths faster than her, and I don't, I could not pick out too much wrong with that other than yeah. a couple tiny micro skids. Uh, yeah. That just shows you the track is going away, and you're yeah. going to have to be perfect to hold. And you can see at the top, it's like rivers of water. Everywhere else that's covered, it's matte white. That's frost. Yep. And think about it when you put your hand in the ice box and your fingertips stick. That's what happens with the runners. Janine Flock leads, five to go. Great opportunity for Italy's Valentina Margaglio, her first World Cup race of the season, as it is for all the Italians, to have a big result here. This is not a track that she's really starred on before, despite the fact she's got a great start. Best result ever, sixth position here in Winterberg. She has been a silver and bronze medalist, though, in World Cup races. Had a 524 push second first run. We'll see what she can put down here. Big uh, skid, though. Yeah. 519. But still Only person herself. to go faster so far. Yeah. Best velocity, but... All right, but she steered herself square into the zero curve rather than get spat out. A little bit of a skid, though, so we'll see how that strategy works out. She handled it better than most, but a tap before four in a flat section. Yeah. Really hurt you. We'll see how she can manage it down here. Gap has come down from 34 to 21 hundreds. The speed is nowhere near where it needs to be. The lead's going to go with Janine Flock, isn't it? The question now is, how far down does she fall? Not even top 10 in terms of speed. Down on speed quite a bit. She may drop a couple Ooh. spots there. Big height, 400s first to second, so that's basically a dead heat. She's either going to be third ahead of Freya Tarbit or fourth ahead of Kim Marlman's, and at the line, fourth! Wow. wow. So Janine Flock, Suzanne Crea, and World Cup debutante Freya Tarbit, the one, two, three, with four to go. I don't know what Freya Tarbit thought might happen today, but she didn't say, yeah, I'm going top six. Right now, she will be no worse than seven. She's closing in on her top six first World Cup medal right there. 
Valentina, the, the bigger podium, the top six, but Valentina, very disappointed with that. Looked like she did not have much control of the sled right from the beginning. It wasn't too bad. I mean, there weren't crazy mistakes. It's just the way that the ice is and how frosty it is, is every mistake is just compounded and made so much bigger. And the little mistakes are really slowing you down and you do have to be perfect. C'est la vie, as they say in Germany. Next up, Hannah Neiser, the Olympic champion. Now, her advantage over Janine is bigger. Two tenths of a second. Hannah was not in the top foot three. Only fourth place after the first run. 1100s out of the medals. She needs a big run here, doesn't she? Yeah, she does, and she can do it. Same time as her push from the first run. Handles corner zero like she knows what she's doing here. She should put down a good run. She had one or two tiny mistakes that cost her a bit first run. Uh, she knows what she's doing, and she'll likely fix those and potentially pick Janine off. Right, she's not lost anything. The lead remains 1500s. It should grow at the next clock. 1800. Pretty solid at the moment. A little bit of skid into Kreisel, and that was the same mistake she made first run. But what still the? has the best speed of all. We'll see that mistake manifest in this speed trap right here. Be down a yep. little bit to Janine. It's going to be close. It is going to be close, isn't it? This could be in single digits either way. Looking smooth, but so did Janine Flock. 2200, Building. she's easing away. She was much cleaner down into the seal curve. This will be the lead for Hannah Neiser, the Olympic champion. Boy, a big margin. Wow, she drove the final couple of corners there and yeah. really carried that speed. That's some of that just home track knowledge, some of those things that I really don't know what she did, but she knows what she's doing, and she made some speed in the bottom of the track. Yeah, Tina Herman knows that as well. Go into the final corner behind, come out two tenths in front. I don't know where that wormhole is, but the Germans have located it. I'd sure like to find it. Yeah. But it Big all builds. Big height. That may cost her the potential win right there. Yeah. Uh, she may not be able to pick off enough of the leaders, but she still did make a lot of speed. And that is not the fastest line, but she still was moving down at the bottom yeah. of the track. Holds 11 long. Uh, maybe that's part of it, getting that slingshot off a late exit from 11. Hannah Neiser leads the Olympic champion with three to go, including two-time winner, Tina Herman, two-time winner, Kimberly Boss, and our first heat leader, Mimi Reneva. So here we go. Tina Herman won here in the 15-16 season after the World Championships. She won here in 1920. Tina with a 200s faster start time than her first and a big skid down into down into corner one. We'll see how that costs her. She can, if there's anyone that knows how to handle it, it is Tina. We'll see. The, the ice is not great and does not reward any mistakes like that or too early into four. Yeah, tap dancing away there to try and nudge the line. And again, very busy with the feet. Lots of work going on. Only 200s in the lead. Down on speed. Yeah. Only the 10th fastest speed. Not something you see from Tina quite a lot. Yawning gap between Hannah Neiser, the leader, and Janine Flock, and Freya Tarbit, and uh, Suzanne Kreia, the, the pursuing pack. She's pulled back a bit, though. It's going to be hard to beat Hannah's bottom, though. She's 400 back. Hannah had a fast bottom, and she's down on yep. speed to her. She hasn't got the speed of Hannah Neiser. And six hundreds behind at the line, 58-69. So Hannah Neiser leads and is in the medals. Two to go. Sadly, it cost her right up top. Those very tiny skids with a, with a not frosty track. Tina probably could have driven right out of that, but with the way the track is at the moment. <laughs> I love the way she laughs off everything, whether she wins, loses, or draws. She's in that happy period of her career. Little mistake there in the four. Tap dancing. Yeah, that right foot. Just left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Good to see what the home fans. Yes, really good. Our winner in Lake Placid is in second place. Hannah Neiser, the Olympic champion, is the race leader. Let's see what a two-time winner on this track last year, Kimberly Boss of the Netherlands, can do. Kim has her fan club here, her friends and family back from the Netherlands, only a few hours away. 
Well, what a season last year. World Cup champion and Olympic medal. Doesn't get much better, does it? No, that's pretty good. Pretty decent. All had a pretty good season. Yeah, pretty decent. Let's see if she can add to that. 36 hundreds over Hannah Nyza. She's growing the advantage. She had a little, little skid going into corner one. She managed it well. We'll see if she can uh, man and keep, keep it from bleeding. And she has held at least. One of the few athletes on a Bromley built sled. Only the six best speed. This could come down very tight indeed to the line. Little correction, of course, there. Six best speed still. She's holding her gap, though. Yeah. Three tenths up. At the moment, it looks like she will be able to hold off. Hold Give off Hannah. Boss. It'll be a small gap. Yeah. Twice a winner last year. She leads with one to go. Lots of Dutch cheers at the bottom. So, Kimberly Boss, this could be a very big day for her. She's only ever won World Cup races on this track. Is that going to continue? Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> There's Mike Rogels. Here's the podium, Blaise Sassoon. Boyfriend coach and uh, co-commentator in the men's race. See a slight little skid right there and the toes in the water, just the running river down, down the track at the moment. Yeah. Nice little dip in the icy water. Yeah. Look how relaxed she is on the sled as well. That's such a great shot, that hyper motion. Just the body acting as a damper to keep the sled on the ice when the vibrations are trying to bounce it free. Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah, and that shows such confidence. So with the sled, Joe Cicchini, and alongside Mimi Reneva, first heat leader by just eight hundredths of a second. Well, Mimi, third in the World Cup standings, seventh in Whistler, victorious in Park City, and then eighth in Lake Placid. Can she become our first two-time winner of the year in women's skeleton? We had a two-time winner in the men's with Christi uh, Christopher Grohnherr. Gets a lot of corner one, but controls it well. Tap dancing, right from zero rather down to one. 500 faster push than her first run and the best velocity into corner one has a good top section, and she's maintaining her lead to Kim Boss. Wow. That's all this you can was, ask for right now. It was a tiny margin, eight hundredths of a second, the blink of an eye. Five hundredths. Falling down a bit, and she's down on speed. Now, Mimi is one of those field sliders who just kind of produces speed sometimes. Here we go, third best speed now. Up on speed to Kim. She's holding her differential. This Down is to two hundredths of, of a second. second. They might need to dig another silver, she another gold. Drop. No, it's going to be victory for Boss. It oh. is victory for Boss. Third World Cup win, three in a row in the Dutch Alps. Silver medal goes to Mimi Reneva. Yeah. That run from 11 down to the finish line is what was the nail in the coffin, but she takes a silver medal, her second medal of the season. Still a great run and a great race for Mimi, though. <laughs> Wiping off that. does need a windshield wiper. Get some rain -X on there. Yeah. In fairness, I, I guess that probably only happens when you come, you come up the outrun, but... Yeah, this definitely didn't help her cause, and now is probably a little bit of time down the bottom, but everyone's making those mistakes tonight. Yeah. Well, just that one steer from one to two. There's Mimi, silver medalist here. Jane Shaw offers her congratulations. Top ten for Jane, but a third straight win in Winterberg for Kimberly Boss, the queen of the Dutch Alps. <laughs> there are more Dutch registration cars in Winterberg than German registration cars in Winterberg at this time of year. This is where they come for, for skiing. And there's a few down at the bottom of the track as well. And boy, she made it look like there was not much drama on this track today. That's what you want in Winterberg. You want to make it look like you're doing nothing. Great stuff from Kimberly Boss, our fourth different winner of the season. Thank you, Kijken. And she's got her dog on the podium with her. Martin called it the Dutch Alps earlier. There you go. 
It is the Dutch Alps, that's why. <laughs> She's talking there to Ilko, our cameraman at the finish, who is also Dutch, as is uh, a part of the key members of the crew. Kimberly Boss, Victoria's then from Mimi Reneva, Hannah Neiser, Tina Herman, Janine Flock, and Suzanne Kreyer. Rookie Freya Tarbit, what a day. I don't care what happens in the Junior Worlds next week. That's uh, certainly a great indication of where the young talent may well be coming from. And Team GB's Tabby Stocker and her first ever days on this track finishes in 12th in a full World Cup field. Excellent stuff from them. Well, as ever, these races hard to call. Bye. Sometimes the favourites come up Let with the goods, the and sometimes they just blow out. <laughs> this time, move. Kimberly Boss came out victorious. Okay. And you're going to have to join us on Saturday and Sunday as we change mode yeah. to bobsleigh for women's yeah. monobob and two man on Saturday, women's bobsleigh and four man on Sunday. Tina Herman, still the World Cup points leader from Hannah Neiser with Mimi Reneva in third, now just two points ahead of Kim Boss, Suzanne Crayer and Kelly Curtis still in the top half dozen. So medals really make a big difference because you get a whole bunch of points with them as well. Junior Worlds next week, we'll see a slightly different look to our field in Altenburg. We should have a few more athletes back as well who are not here this week in Winterberg after a pretty extended winter break. Well, that's it from a rainy Winterberg. Thanks again to Austin Florian for joining us hot foot from the uh, doping control room after the men's race to call the action in the women's race. For the IBSF TV crew here in Winterberg, I'm Martin Haven saying thank you for being with us and we look forward to seeing you again on Saturday for all the bobsled action. Du erzählst noch ein paar Interviews und dann noch die Siegerehrung. Alle, die jetzt noch da sind bei dem Wetter und bei der Siegerehrung bleiben, werden zur Winterberger Ehrenbürger ernannt. Müssen dann aber immer kommen, egal bei welchem Wetter. Das ist immer so.
Hello, hello, it's me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are we good? Are we good? Can you hear me? Hey! How are you today? Three in a row. Not yeah, as good as you. It's only three, but it's three in a row in the same track. So yeah. Like You've got to start winning somewhere else now, though. Exactly. Yeah. Next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Classy. I bet that's been all the way through commentary. I'll need some water. Yeah. Well, there you are, I see. Okay, hey. ready when you are, uh, <laughs> Kimberly Boss, how is today in the rain in Winterberg for you? Very wet, but great day, especially after training. <laughs> Listen, you weren't very happy after training, but it all came good on race day, which is all that matters in the end. It's all that matters in the end, but it's nice to be able to practice the track well, and we didn't really get a chance this week, but luckily I have a lot of experience here, so... Now, you were the last to go in the second heat, and it was like white water rafting, uh, almost, the, almost the last to go. Yeah. But it was, it was appallingly wet at the start. Did, was that a problem? Yeah, I was terrified of that happening, honestly, and I, I handled it better than I did in training, so I'm very happy with that. <laughs> okay, so three World Cup wins, three World Cup wins in Winterberg. You need to start winning somewhere apart from the Dutch Alps. Yeah, so next week is the next chance, right? <laughs> and uh, what do you want to say to the fans back home? Oh, I'm, I'm glad they're watching. There's so many here. Like, it feels like the Dutch Alps, so it's amazing. It's a good race. There's um, a good atmosphere. So, yeah, great one to win. <laughs> Congratulations.